course, you shouldn't. <laughs> All right, a very important part of the exercise taking place there at the Brookhouse International School, and that is the balloting, the various presidential candidates picking a piece of paper that will determine who goes first, who goes second, who goes last. That is an important process to ensure that there is fairness in the way that this debate is conducted. Remember, they'll also have uh, important uh, elements of this again inside the hall where the the candidates will spend an equal roughly equal amount of time explaining themselves on different questions but right now we are going to uh, wrap up here very quickly i want to get your thoughts on uh, the one thing that you expect from this debate uh, at end before we cross over I think I expect that those who the opinion polls have consistently showed as not doing very well, actually I think have put in a lot of work for the debate and to just prove to Kenyans that given a chance, if we were really doing a serious reflection exercising about the choices we okay. make. The, uh, execution, how, how they will execute their policy. Thank you very much. Asango? Um, two things, how they will be working on governance and how they will ensure national cohesion. Masharia? I think clarity and coherently answering the hard questions, if the hard questions are asked. Last word from the general. I would like to see that uh, they live to the, whatever they have been telling the Wananchi and what they are going to tell us you know, tonight, not only for consumption. Oh, all right, uh, very well. That much anticipated hour is finally at hand. That is the historic presidential debate, the first ever in Kenya, just about to get underway at the Brookhouse International School. And we'll be bringing you that live across all TV stations in just a few moments. But first, we take a very short commercial break. Don't go away. Kenya wezangu nigependa muwe na amani kuliko mwaka wa harufu biri na saba. Ile pita niliona sigewa yona. Nilirara ije mwesi muzima. Naoba watoto yetu. Mugu alituokoa tusimujaribu tena. Tukatae kata kata. Naoba kwa niyabayagu na yako pia. Kenyans. Our opinions may be divided, but we embrace peace. Our challenges may be different, but we stand together in love. Our cultures may be diverse, but we are bound in unity. This is the land painted in the colors of peace, love, and unity. We are Kenyans, and nothing can come between us. Not now, not ever. Kenya, kijukumu lako la kizalendo kuchagua viongozi katika uchaguzi mkuu jao tarehe nne machi mwaka huu. Siku ya kupiga kura, hakikisha umerauka mapema ili kujitayarisha vilivyo kwa shughuli hii muhimu ya kupiga kura. Hakikisha umevaa nguo zisizo na alama ama nembo yoyote ya chama chochote ama mgombea yoyote. kwa kituo chako kwa wakati unaofaa Nitafanya uamuzi wangu IEBC your vote your future Seven elections, three presidents, and now Kenya heads to the polls in the country's biggest election ever. From the shores of the Indian Ocean to the peaks of Mount Kenya, the valleys of the Great Rift to the rainforest of the West, the vast arid plains of northern Kenya to the grasslands of the South. Right across the country, over 14 million voters will decide. Tonight, Martha Karua, 
Peter Kenneth, Uhuru Kenyatta, James Olekiyapi, Musalia Mudabadi, and Raila Odinga interview for the country's top job in Kenya's first ever presidential debate. Who will emerge the first president of the Second Republic? Welcome to the Kenya Presidential Debate 2013. Your hosts, Linus Kaikai and Julie Hishuru. Good evening, welcome to the first of two presidential debates intended to give you a comprehensive picture of the candidates, their outlook on the issues, their policies, and their commitments on the matters that are of greatest concern to this nation. This debate has been organized by the Kenyan media and is coming to you live on all participating television and radio stations across the country. It is also streaming live online for the global audience. The next two hours are unprecedented in the history of Kenyan elections. For the first time ever, presidential candidates have together agreed to submit themselves to a debate on relevant issues and pertinent national issues. Eight of the presidential candidates are here tonight to debate each other before an audience. The audience will maintain silence throughout the debate, except a few moments from now when we'll put our hands together to welcome the 2013 presidential candidates one by one. Well, earlier, the Kenya Presidential Debates Steering Committee conducted a balloting session with the candidates to determine their order of entrance tonight and the podium position for each candidate. It's time now to welcome the presidential candidates. And tonight, we begin with Mohamed Abdubadida from, from the Alliance for Real Change Party. Let's give him a round of applause. We will ask you to take take the front of the stage for the moment. Please do come forward. Stand in front of the right, right podium. there. Thank you yes, so next much. Next to your podium. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we welcome the second candidate tonight in order of balloting again, and that is Professor James Olekiyapi of the Rebuild and Restore Kenya Party. Arbitrary. Next, we have Uhuru Kenyatta from TNA, which is part of the Jubilee Alliance. Let's give him a round of applause. And next on stage tonight, we do have the presidential candidate of the Kenya National Congress, and that is the Honorable Peter Kenneth. With us tonight, we have Musalia Mudavadi from UDF, part of the Amani Alliance. Let's give him a round of applause as well. And now let's welcome to the stage the only female presidential candidate in this race, Martha Karua of the NAC Kenya Party. Oh. 
Also with us tonight, Raila Odinga of ODM, part of the Cord Alliance. And finally, the last candidate coming in tonight, the Honorable Paul Muite of the Safina Party. Welcome to you all, a list of eight presidential candidates taking part in this debate tonight. And the debate will focus on broad thematic areas of governance, security, and social services. Each candidate will be expected to explain their position in two minutes and will be given additional time for rebuttals. The rules of engagement discussed and agreed by each candidate requires them to treat and address each other with respect. Now, this debate has two main segments, part one, which is focused on governance, and part two, which includes questions from the audience. We thank you all for joining us and making time for this debate tonight. And at this point, ladies and gentlemen, let us all be upstanding for the national anthem. It is performed tonight by Carol Atemi. <laughs> take your seats and the presidential candidates you may take your stands at the podiums at this point I hand over to Linus Kaikai to take us through part one of this crucial debate thank you very much and thank you once again candidates and welcome again to this debate the first part is about self-introduction we're not going into policies we're just going into self-introduction and this is your moment to do what you don't get to do in rallies Tell us about yourself for 30 seconds. Who are you and what is your strength? And in order of the ballot again, we will start with the candidate for the Alliance for Real Change, Mr. Abdul Badida. Thank you so much. My name's uh, Mohammed Abdul Badida. And I usually like using the title Molimu 
because I'm professionally trained and it is a noble profession, so I'm proud of it. Uh, I'm vying for the presidency, as you very well know, and my political party that nominated me is Alliance for Real Change, abbreviated ARK. Most of the media, many people mistake it for ARC, but the K is as by it appears. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dida. That is, uh, you have only 30 seconds to introduce yourself. Let's go to candidate on platform or podium number two. I'm James Olekiyapi, and I've been a public official for 20 years, and I am very grateful to God today that I am here as one of the presidential candidates on this historic day in the Republic of Kenya. Good evening, viewers, and I'm glad to be with you. Thank you, Professor Kiyapi. Let's go to candidate on platform podium number three. Good evening, everybody. My name is Uhuru Kenyatta. I'm a proud Kenyan who has been in public service and as a politician for the last 15 years. I'm a husband, a father, and a person who is greatly committed to this country and who seeks to be given the opportunity to make my contribution to this country through the election um, that is due in the next few weeks. Thank you, Honorable Kenyatta. Next candidate on podium number four. Thank you for having me here tonight. I am bothered by what I see as lack of basic facilities for our people. I'm here tonight because we must fix security, sort out infrastructure, fix water and sanitation, fix health care, and reform our educational system. We must grow our economy. I believe I have something unique to offer our country in terms of leadership. Thank you. Thank you very much. And this is a moment of self-introduction. So you confirm that you are Peter Kenneth. Had already, you had already said it. That, that's right. To. Let's go to the next candidate's platform, number five. I am Musalia Mudavadi. I'm the UDF presidential candidate in the Amani coalition. I wish to present myself to the Kenyan people so that I can serve them as the fourth president of the Republic of Kenya. I'm also pleased that I am part of this historic moment so that Kenyans can listen to us and evaluate us from a different perspective. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Mudavadi. Candidate on number six. I'm Martha Karua, a mother, recently a grandmother. I grew up and did my early schooling in my home county, Kirinyaga. And thanks to my parents and the community around me, I learned the values of honesty, hard work, and community that is caring for others, values that have stood me in good stead today. You can trust that the promises I make to you will be delivered. I'm a woman of her own word. Thank you, Honorable Karua. Candidate number seven tonight. Good evening, viewers. My name is Raila Amolo Odinga. I'm an engineer by profession and the current prime minister. I am happy that this event is taking place today. History is being made. For the first time, presidential candidates are facing Kenyans to tell them what they want to do for them. I hope that this is now a step towards realizing the Kenyan dream as coined by the founding fathers of our nation which is in our national anthem. I will be going to spend time to tell thank Kenyans. You, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You. Thank you very much, Honorable Bodinga. We go to candidate number eight. You have my, 30 seconds to tell us about yourself, my, who you are, and indeed, what is your strength? My name is Paul Muite, a lawyer by profession. In 1990, as chair of the Law Society, I was one of those who started on this journey towards the realization of the new constitution which, which we now have. Not as a NED in itself, but a means to a NED. I'll be talking a little later about that end. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you all candidates for introducing yourself. We're now going straight to the issues. And uh, we had indicated to you the broad thematic, thematic areas, uh, governance, <coughs> national security, and social services. And I want us to begin with the single most 
serious problem in this country, the cancer that afflicts the politics, the elections and governance in this country, the problem of tribalism or ethnicity. Let's hear from each candidate for two minutes what your appreciation of the problem is and what you intend to do and how different you'll be from the predecessors of the president we are seeking to elect. That is Jomo Kenyatta, Daniel Arap Moy, and Mwai Kibaki, all who made tribe the base of their governments. Let's start with um, Mr. Dida. Thank you so much. I think uh, governance uh, is actually the most crucial issue that contributed to the failure of this nation. And uh, the only way out is uh, full implementation of the Constitution. Mr. Dida, let me remind you, we're talking about tribalism. What is your appreciation of the problem, and what do you intend to do to be different from the previous presidents of this country? Well, uh, Kenyans, 90% of Kenyans are actually defeated by their own systems of life. And this issue of tribalism is a factor contributed by 5% of each community leaders who want to connect to the leading class. So when, if this issue of governance is sorted out and the constitution is fully implemented and everybody has his right, nobody will rush to the other because every Kenyan will have his, his or her own right. So it is a problem currently biting because of the current economic and social situation in the country. If governance is corrected, then that is a forgotten story. It will go. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dida. Two minutes for Professor Kiyapi. I just want to start at the outset by saying all Kenyans are born equal, irrespective of which part of the country. And I know that this country is enough for all of us. The reason why tribalism is a problem to us is because leaders have used it as a means of allocating resources and positions and therefore marginalizing others, marginalizing other Kenyans. If our leaders and if today we would promise and commit to ourselves that we will share national resources equitably and that everybody is given a fair chance in life, then I don't have any reason to believe that Kenyans really hate each other that much because we grew, we went to the same schools. I myself went to Alliance High School and I was the only Maasai boy in Form 1 but nobody looked at me as different. So I believe that it is the leadership that must address this issue. And you haven't told us, you have a minute to go of your time, you haven't told us what you intend to do as president. To what I want to do uh, as president is that I want a government of inclusion, a government where every Kenyan, irrespective of where they are, will look at those ministers, those permanent secretaries, those uh, ambassadors. They will, it will be done fairly and on merit. I want also a government that will share national resources fairly and equitably and in a way that all Kenyans feel that this is their country, because it is their country. Thank you very much. Let's go to Honorable Kenyatta. Your appreciation of the problem of tribalism and how different you intend to be from the past three presidents. Thank you. Let me begin by saying that tribalism is a cancer that has afflicted this country for a very long time and has been a source of conflict, has been a source of death has been a source of destruction of property. And this we saw the worst of in the post-election violence of 2007. I personally believe that this problem is largely associated as a result of the battle for resources. And in the past what we have seen is a position where positions of leadership go and people are made to assume that if your community is in leadership, Therefore, you will be entitled to a greater share of the cake. We have a new constitution now. That new constitution is very clear on what it requires of all of us as Kenyans. My job as president is to ensure that that constitution is implemented, but furthermore, to ensure that through devolution, something that I have tried practically when I was in the Ministry of Finance, we ensure that resources are distributed accordingly to every part of this country and ensure that the government that we form is an inclusive government that will ensure that every single Kenyan feels part and parcel of that 
government. Just 45 seconds of your time are still on, and I would like to hear from you where the link is between a new constitution and the eradication of tribalism. First and foremost, I think the constitution is now very clear, and there are very clear guidelines as to what politicians can say, especially during their campaigns. The use of ethnicity as a card in the campaign is something that the constitution, for example, does not recognize anymore. So therefore, what has been happening in the past where you've had politicians saying or accusing communities, that isn't there. The hate speech that we have seen in the past, now we have laws that clearly control and ensure that that kind of language isn't allowed on any political platform. We cannot incite one another. We have to offer what it is our policies are that ensure that we eradicate poverty and deal with the real issues that are of concern to Kenyans. Thank you, Honorable Kenyatta. Honorable Peter Kenneth. Your appreciation of tribalism? Yes, I grew up in this city, on the Eastlands part of it, specifically in Bahati, where all communities were represented and there was no tribalism. I had the opportunity to go to the Starray Boys Centre where again was all communities represented. So I've not seen effect in my upgrowing of tribalism. Tribalism is an excuse that poor leadership and weak leadership gives to Kenyans. We come in and practice tribalism because we feel that if it is practiced, then that community A, where I come from, will benefit. We were never taught tribalism in primary. We never learned it in any institution of learning. It is something to do with leadership, and I'll say poor leadership and weak, le and weak leadership. Now, we have a new constitution. We've always had sets of laws. It is poor enforcement and implementation that continues to drive us to tribalism because all forms of impunities either were dealt with at an efficient space and speed. We would not have all these levels of impunities. Now, I want to tell you this. In my plan, I have looked at equality, I have looked at equity, so that never again will Kenyans feel they are not equal? Never again will Kenyans feel that one side of the country is inferior to the other. And I have to make this absolutely clear that the fight over resources in my plan comes to an end. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Kenneth. We go to Honorable Mudavid, and I want to remind all candidates, you're here to engage each other, and I hope you're listening to each other, because questions will then be coming up after this. Let's go to Honorable Mudavadi. Your position of ethnicity, tribalism and what you intend to do if elected president? Tribalism is real. Uh, it is serious. We can try and uh, parry around it, but the fact of the matter is that tribalism is real. And it comes out because there's a sense of insecurity. The way we have practiced our politics is that we have created a sense of insecurity amongst communities. We have reached a stage where we are telling our community, unless you are hardened, into one corner, then your interests are not properly taken care of. Now, we have an opportunity as a Kenyan people to be able to break away from this. And this is largely based on the issue of the new constitution. The new constitution makes it very clear that the way public resources are going to be distributed within the context of devolution, a formula is going to be put in place determined by parliament. At the same time, uh, the constitution makes it very clear that communities that have had that have been marginalized must not be marginalized. So the solution lies in implementing the constitution to the letter. The other thing that really comes up is that as we move ahead, it will be very important that we take a public audit of the way our public service, and particularly even within the private sector, is constituting itself. Nobody should cheat ourselves. We should not cheat ourselves. It's so clear that if you did an audit, you will find that there are certain favoritisms that have been occurring in the appointment of public officers, and indeed, even within the private sector, where the shareholders, being based from one particular community, tend to favor people of their community. This must stop. Thank you, Honorable Mudavari. Let's go to Honorable Karua. Your appreciation of the problem of ethnicity and what you would intend to do if elected president. Tribalism is a social and economic issue. More about perceptions and also about how resources are distributed. 
In every ethnic community, we have a section of the poor. In some areas, more than in others. But there is no single ethnic community that does not have poor and desperate people. So it is the perception that because you're from community X, you have no problem, others are the ones having a problem. I think it's perpetrated more by leadership. We have to own up as leaders, take responsibility, and lead people out of this. How I will deal with it as president, one is to ensure that we equalize all the areas in terms of development or bring them to as near as possible. And that is not just through the devolved funds, it's by deliberately giving more funds to areas that have been hitherto marginalized. When our development across the country, across the 47 counties, is as nearly as equal as possible, nobody will listen to leadership talking about tribalism. But now the desperation leads people to believe that a person from your ethnic group will do better. Secondly, it will be through public education. Nobody gets their food every day from their tribe. It's from their sweat of their brow. And when a citizen is sleeping hungry, their tribe or the leader from their tribe is not with them. It's that person and their God. Therefore, we ought to unite together to develop our country. But as a leader, I'll lead from the front. And I'll ensure that in my government, there is inclusion, both in cabinet and in other jobs, as we fight this court. Thank you very much. Let's go to Honorable Dinga. Well, uh, Linus, uh, uh, ethnicity is a disease of the elite. The elite who are in competition for the resources in the country resort to ethnicity as an ideology. Uh, when Kenyans were fighting for independence, they were so united. The, Kenyan, the movement for independence was very united. Ethnicity reared its ugly head immediately after independence when the nationalist movement split. The, the elites started to coerce leadership for uh, allocation of resources. Down the road next door in Tanzania, Malimu Nyerere introduced a very unifying uh, ideology that united the people of Tanzania. We now have a legal framework to deal with this animal that is called uh, ethnicity by ensuring that there is equity in allocation of resources in our country. If we faithfully implement this new constitution, then we'll be able to realize the Kenyan dream of our founding fathers. That is Kenya for all, not for just a few elites. By ensuring that all parts of the country get equity in terms of allocation of resources, that we promote education for all our children, that um, every Kenyan has access to Medicare, that uh, all these social amenities are available to everybody, but most importantly, that people are united at the national level. When somebody goes on a national screen and flaunts ethnic figures to say that because our countries come from these communities, because of this, this election has already been won at the time of registration. It is a very dangerous proposition because it basically rubbishes the other communities. We in court know that we have a solution to this problem. And your time is up. Let's go to Honorable Moite. I would begin by saying we need to accept we are 30, 42 different ethnic communities in Kenya speaking different mother tongues. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that because all these 42 communities are human beings with the same aspirations, same needs, and what have you. It is negative ethnicity that is a problem. And that comes about because of the high levels of poverty in this country, because of corruption, because of impunity. So people feel insecure and wrongly believe that they can only advance economically and socially if one of their own is in power. How would Safina tackle this problem? It would tackle this problem by rearranging the economic social problem so as to target the majority poor, like harvesting rainwater from Pokot through to Turukana, everywhere, including Masaini, so as to give opportunity we can grow everything. Let's start with the basics. 
Let us begin by feeding ourselves adequately because it is a shame that every three, four years we have to go begging food and yet we can feed ourselves. Let us invest in agriculture, research, so as to come up with high yielding seed varieties from cotton to maize to everything, value adding to what we propose. I think if people felt economically secure, they will think less and less of their ethnic communities because everybody needs the same things. Thank you. Now, candidates, viewers watching you at home and even here in the audience, having listened to your opening statements on ethnicity, would then wonder why some things are done this, the way they're done. And I want to refer all of you, and some of you specifically, to campaigns, current campaigns. None of you have referred to the campaigns, and I want to refer you to, to that. Campaigns have taken the shape of a contest between tribes or blocks of tribes. I want to specifically put on the spot COD, uh, the Honorable Dinga, and Jubilee, the Honorable uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, to immediately, right now, uh, respond to that perception that both of you are indeed leading tribes or blocks of tribes and specifically against each other. Starting with Honorable Uhuru. Uh, thank you very much. Let me say this. Our Jubilee platform is a platform that has been built on issues. If you have followed and listened to the speeches that we have made with my running mate, um, the Honorable William Ruto, throughout the country, we have emphasized the need for us to be able to focus on the real issues that affect our people. Unemployment, poverty, the social infrastructure, the need for us to be able to pull together as Kenyans, the need for us to be able to be united and understanding that the best way to deal with our problems is not for leaders to be pulling apart but working together. Despite our own personal differences, we need to pull together. Now it is indeed true that numbers are being bandied around. But those numbers, if you look, are largely also being bandied around by the political analysts who are out there. Just as there's language that is also... But, but, but would you admit, Honorable Kenyatta, that your campaign revolves around the Kikuyu and Kalenjin communities? I would completely disagree. If you would look at where we have had all our rallies so far, I have not had a single rally yet in um, Central Province since I was uh, nominated. We have been campaigning in the Coast Province. We have been campaigning up in Meru. We were in Rift Valley the, the other day. We're moving on to uh, um, um, Lower Eastern, where we intend to be. So we've been up to Korea. So we, we are actually conducting a national campaign, a campaign that is aimed at bringing all Kenyans together with a purpose right. of bringing forming a government that right. will be all-inclusive and that will deal with the real issues that face common one in Chile. Bringing Kenyans together, Honorable Kenyatta, and when you were in uh, Meru last month, you asked, when you asked a certain region not to divide their vote, what do you mean? Well, what I am saying is if we understand and we are moving on the same platform, we saw a situation where, for example, you have a number of candidates um, in a particular constituency, all saying they support the same presidential candidate, but yet they are on different platforms. And I said, if we really want to implement the agenda that we have, given our new constitution, given the strength uh, and the powers that have been given to Parliament. If we don't have the necessary numbers in Parliament to implement our agenda, it is going to make it difficult. So, I was saying, if you have two or three or four candidates claiming to support me, then I say, then we need to be in one party so that we can implement the agenda and the promises that we're making in Parliament. We'll come back to you, the Honourable Kenyatta. Let me go to Honourable Odinga. And I want to take you back to 2002, 2005, 2007, and now, your politics revolve around building or getting appointment from tribes. I'm talking about the summit, 2002. I'm talking about the Orange campaign uh, against the new constitution in 2007. I'm also talking about the Pentagon in uh, 2007. And now, lately, you talk about triangle, all made up of appointment from regions. Isn't this? Tribalism, Mr. Odinga. First, you know, uh, Kenyans must come from certain regions. They cannot be invented from the moon. 
So uh, p- people come together for a particular purpose. Like now you have got God. It's a coalition of the willing. People who have come together because of certain values that they shared together. In 2002, that was the third time that the position was going for an election. Remember, we lost in 92. We lost also again in 97. So in 2002, we decided to come together and rally behind one person. That's why I said Kibaki Tosha. That was to unite the people of Kenya, to unite the, the people said the Luos could not vote for Kibaki because it was a Kikuyu, and no Luo can vote for a Kikuyu. I said, Kikuyus are Kenyans, and uh, there was never a war between Luos and Kikuyus. And I managed to ca- campaign for Kibaki, that Kibaki got majority of votes. You need to know that James Orengo, a Luo, was also a presidential candidate in 1992. That, that was 2002. 2002. That was 2002, but isn't it true that in the 2005 and 2000 votes, your mathematics was a simple 41 minus 42 minus 1. And you know what I mean? That, I, that is a creation of the media. Nowhere did anybody talk about 41 versus 1. That was actually a propaganda. We talked of uniting all the people of Kenya. And we were running against an incumbent who happened to come from one particular community. But ODM was basically a national movement of, which brought in the communities from all over the country, like God today. God is a national movement which has brought Kenyans of all walks of life, different communities. And we have never talked about ethnicity. It is our opponents who are being ethnic figures to try to intimidate the other communities by saying that, oh, this election has already been won because the candidate and his running mate come from this community and so many are the votes which are registered in this community. We are saying that basically misses the point. The point is that every Kenyan matter whether it's an El Molo, the smallest tribe, or a Kikuyu, the biggest tribe. Let us work together to unite the people of this country. This is what God stands for. One Kenya, one nation, for all, for all. And I'm going to the rest of the candidates now, and, but before I go there, still to Uhuru and the Raila, the question of the rivalry between the Kikuyu and the Luo communities, which is at the epicenter of the Kenya's ethnicity problem. Um, there are people who view you, a lot of people view you as taking it on from where your fathers left it. Jomo Kenyatta and Jaramogi Odinga Odinga, both of you uh, picking it up from 69. Uh, Uhuru. Kenya has come a long way since then. And I, I want to remind those Kenyans who maybe have that feeling that uh, they just need to look back into recent history. You know, as late as 1997, we were together with the Honorable Raila in the uh, Kano government and we campaigned together until the time of uh, um, Kasarani, we parted ways and he went to support um, Mwai Kibaki. Soon thereafter, the 2005 referendum, again, we campaigned on the same platform and he led the No campaign uh, for the constitution at the time and I supported him and campaigned throughout the country. So personally, I have no differences with the Honorable Raila. Um, I see him as a colleague, I see him as a brother, but we may differ on um, how to handle some of the issues that face this country. And I think that is why we have elections, so that the people of Kenya are given an opportunity to choose between the candidates. Honorable Dinga? No, I basically agree totally with my brother, Uhuru Kenyatta. We have nothing personal between each one of us. In fact, we are the best of friends. And you remember, if you go down the memory lane, my father spearheaded the, the, the struggle for release of Jomo Kenyatta from prison. Uh, he was a Luo, Kenyatta was a Kikuyu, but they were united. In 2002, I said Kibaki Tosha. Kibaki is a Kikuyu, but I said Kikuyu is a Kenyan. So we managed to unite the people behind him. We disagreed on the issue of MOU and on the Constitution. And on that issue of the Constitution, me and my brother Huru Kenyatta were on the same side. We campaigned for a no, and that's where the orange was born uh, against the, the uh, uh, banana. But now we want to see that um, Kenyans make an informed choice on the basis of policies. Jubilee has got a policy document, Court has got a policy document. Thank you.
Thank you, Honorable Dean, and I want to bring in the rest of the candidates now on this issue of ethnicity, particularly what is emerging tonight and generally that greater responsibilities lies with code and jubilee on the question of ethnicity. And I want to bring in uh, Martha Karua. What I would like to say is that Kenyans can hear for themselves today the leaders denying that there's no tribal overtones. Kenyans are the judges. And I would like to tell Kenyans that there's no difference between a poor law, a poor kikuyu, a hungry member of any tribe, and we are better off uniting and fighting together to liberate ourselves from hunger, to liberate ourselves from uh, lack of access to medical services, to get ourselves better education. We are better united and following the denial because no politician will admit they are peddling tribalism. Following our denials here, my urging to Kenyans, please do not allow us to mislead you. No tribe puts food on your table. It is you, your God, and the opportunities that you have. Why don't we join hands to create opportunities for every Kenyan? I look forward to the day that our laws will be properly applied so that any leader who makes speeches that are inciting ethnicity, irrespective of their social standing, is actually made to account under our laws. Thank you very much. And now for the remaining candidates, I'll give them 30 seconds each, starting with uh, the Honorable Mudabadi. Uh, you know, your campaign also is seen to be focusing on Western Kenya only. No, I think you've got it wrong. That is absolutely false because we are traversing the entire country. We are campaigning in the entire country. A few days ago, I was in the coastal region and I intend to go to other parts of the country so, and in Nairobi. So that is not true. But I stand here in a very unique position. I'm one of the few people standing here today who has supported Uhuru for the presidential candidate in 2002 and supported Honorable Raila as a president in 2007 elections. So clearly, from that perspective, the tag of tribalism should be distanced from me. Thank you very much. Honorable Kenneth. Well, I'm very surprised tonight because we are being economical with truth. We need to look at the Kenyans right straight into the eye. We have wiped tribal emotions since we became a multi-party state. That's why we have hundreds of Kenyans in IDP camps. It is tribal emotions. And this is why we must now start discussing issues. We must start being realistic. We now must start thinking that we must elect what is right, not what is convenient. We must break away the historical bondage that we've been tied to in the last 50 years. Thank, thank you, uh, Kenneth. And let's go to Professor Kiyapi. Uh, Professor Kiyapi, you come from a very small tribe, and we're talking about big numbers, big ethnic numbers. Do you think you count? I count because I believe that the Kenyan, some many, many Kenyan people are also tired of what I'm tired of. And I want to say this. The formula in Kenya since 1960s has always been near election time, the leaders who want power, and there's nothing wrong getting power, must always sit down and look at the ethnic arithmetic, and then you know which block you can pull. And in between, the nation will be and has been divided right down the middle. And I think that was the reason that informed RBK, my party, Restore and Build Kenya to resist the temptation to be part of blockings that will continue to divide Kenya. And it doesn't matter how long it will take, we will pursue that philosophy that we want a country that is one and united in every way, including in our own party. Thank you. Thank you very much. We need to move to the next uh, topic, but uh, Dida, on the question of uh, ethnicity that we're discussing here. Yeah, this uh, issue of fear, insincerity, and betrayal, that this leaders may swallow us started in 1965 when Kadu was formed. Uh, one stylistic device that was, is commonly used in the Kenyan administrative system is irony, where you talk exactly opposite of what you mean. And uh, it has gone, now it is dramatic. Who were the leaders for all those times when we are discussing tribalism in the 21st century? Who are those who were in the box leading? The same same leaders 
uh, trying to, you know, if your football team fails scoring or winning and you change your, their uniform, it won't help. Dear Kenyans, listen well and it is up to you to judge. Thank you. Thank you very much. Honorable Moita, do you agree that the players are the same, the justices are different? Well, well, first of all, let me say how pleased I am to hear the right Honorable Prime Minister saying that uh, the mantra of 41 versus 1 was a creation of the media, and the media does very many crimes. But it, it needs to be re uh, renounced more and more and more. But let us admit that ethnicity is a major challenge in our politics today. Poses a very major challenge. And really, the route to eradicating ethnicity is through um, uh, empowerment, economic and social empowerment. Because every person, irrespective of their tribe, wants adequate clean water, decent housing, access to affordable health care, and so on and so forth. So let us move towards getting Kenyans to ask us as leaders, how are you going to improve my economic social situation rather than vote for me because I come from your tribe? Right. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to bring this to a conclusion and go to the next question. Um, you may remember from the dailies yesterday, if you had a look at them, there was a caricature of this debate. And right behind you was a huge elephant, a very, very big elephant towering over all the candidates. We want, now want to bring the elephant into the room, and that is the ICC question. And I want to begin with uh, Uhuru Kenyatta. Your trial for crimes against humanity begins in April. For two minutes, uh, Honorable Kenyatta, provide the public with a clear plan of how you intend to govern if elected president and at the same time attend trial as a crimes against humanity suspect. Well, thank you. And I have said this severally. First and foremost, the issue of the uh, crimes that we are accused of. We have not been found guilty in any way whatsoever. This is an ongoing case. And we and my deputy have made it very clear that it is indeed our intention to follow the process through and to ensure that we clear our names. At the same time, we are offering ourselves in a position of leadership in this country, a position that we believe and we want to pass on to Kenyans, an agenda that will first and foremost ensure that the kind of things that caused the problems of 2007 are put to an end and to really be able to focus on the critical issues that face the people of Kenya. As I have said, the issue of poverty, the issue of unemployment, lack of basic services. And it is on that platform that we are campaigning. Uh, now, like with everybody else, and need, I want to, need, I'm need, getting there, need, with, like with everything clarity. else. We need some clarity, Honorable Kenyatta. Yes. The mm. question is, how will you govern if elected president, in the first round, for example, your trial is in April? I was getting to that point, and what I was saying is that the way it currently is, many Kenyans are faced with personal challenges, and I take this as a personal challenge. I'm sure that my colleagues here also have other challenges, but those challenges do not prevent one from continuing with their day-to-day -day job. If the people of Kenya do decide to vote for me as their president, I will be able to handle the issue of clearing my name, while at the same time ensuring that the business of government continues, our manifesto and our agenda for Kenya is implemented, and furthermore, even if we look at the um, current situation, the ICC itself, in recognition of the fact that there may be this issue, are even saying we can move this case closer by. In two days' time, and we are in the middle thank of a campaign, yeah, thank we thank will you. be having a status conference. That status conference will be handled through video conferencing, the business of you government will not end. Just a moment, uh, uh, Mr. Dida, you have you want to interject on this? Yeah. Sure, According to yes. the culture of justice, if you are found suspected of a crime, the norms that we had is you step aside until you are cleared. If, if there is no, nothing with you and you are found not guilty, then you resume your, your office. Why is it different with, this, with Uhuru? and uh, his friends. Okay, Honorable Kenyatta. Let me state this. 
The position I am looking for is an elective position, not an appointive position. The position I seek is given by the people of Kenya through their democratic, which is their democratic right. And it is also my democratic right to present myself to Kenyans. They know full well the issues that I am confronted with. Just if they so choose to elect me, it means they have confidence in my ability to discharge my duties as president while still handling the case that is before me. Thank you. And some of your opponents have raised the ICC issue as an integrity question in the campaign trail. And I want to bring in Martha Karua because you've been on record about the ICC question. Yes, I consider it a matter of display of impunity. Like uh, Mr. Uh, my, what the opponent, Mr. Ndida, has indicated, we have laws, the Public Officers Ethics Act. If you're just suspected of crime and you're a public officer, you're supposed to step aside to facilitate investigations. We have another law, the anti-corruption law. It demands if you're a public officer and you're charged with a criminal offense, you actually stand suspended. You have to be suspended pending the outcome. So since the charges were framed, my brother ought to have uh, been suspended as a deputy prime minister. And if he gets elected president, the question is, are you going to be suspended before taking off or after taking off? Any Kenyan can go to court to challenge the position in office because our, as our law stands, there is that hurdle. Yeah. And Kenyatta has a right of reply to your remarks. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be very clear again. The job that I seek is going to be given by the people of Kenya. The people of Kenya who full well know the personal issues that I am confronted with. If they so desire to still give me that job, and it is indeed my hope that they will, it means they have the confidence in my capacity to discharge my duties as president while still proceeding to clear my name. Secondly, I think we need to distinguish between an appointed position